Oh, you gotta love that smell of old, just kind of old oil. So my next project, I picked up this Bridgeport vise. Didn't pay much for it, as you can see, covered in covered in rust. It uh, it moves, so it's got that going for it. And you know, it looks like it could be uh, restored quite nicely. Back to uh, operating condition. So let's. Before we do anything else, let's just pop this guy into some evaporust and see how it comes uh, comes out. All right, so sorry about the vid video quality here. This doesn't come out well. So we just took the vice out of the just took the vice out of the evaporust, and man, it's got some weird colors going on. I don't know what that is. Um, it's been in there for about three or four days which I don't think that's bad, but anyway, here we go. All right, so I realize now that color is the paint. We've got this Bridgeport vise uh, take a quick look at what it looked like before. And you can see what we did is uh, dropped it in some evaporust. It's actually in there for probably three days and hosed it off. And then uh, just wiped it down with a little bit of WD-40 to keep it from rusting until I could uh, get a closer, uh, until I could start, uh, you know, taking a look at it while it was sitting here. Didn't want it to surface rust again. So came out, um, you know, came out really well. The rust came off nicely. Uh, I'm just taking a quick walk around this thing. It's my first time looking at one of these uh, vices. I've got, you've got an oil hole here. Looks like there's a ring with a pin in it to uh, hold that uh, lead screw in. Looks to be in good condition. I don't see a lot of marks on it. There's a couple of small ones here and there. You know, here on the side, it looks like there's some, some threaded holes here. Maybe that's used for a stop. So that's some... Some pretty good thinking there as far as, uh, you know, the design of this. You know, here on this end, you've got access to the Allen heads that'll hold the jaws in. And I'm not sure why this part is ridged. And then you've got an area here where you can mount it down to a table if you're doing the longitudinal uh, versus the, like a perpendicular mount. Um, this actually works out to be a great way to grab it from as far as a, being like a handle. And the other side, much of the same. So you've got your, again, I think those are first stop, but looks to be in good condition. It's got a little bit of the original paint still left on it. A couple of hammer marks and it moves. So, you know, it's got that going for it. Could be a lot worse. So. I'm generally pretty happy with how this guy looks uh, right now. So let's just start to take it apart. First thing, I've got a 3 5 16 Allen head. And we will see if we can get these uh, jaws off. Easy enough. Oh, you gotta love that smell of old, just kind of old oil. Whenever you crack open one of these, uh, these bolts that have been on there for a while, you get that, 
Very aromatic smell. All right. Let's take a quick wipe down here. Yep. No surprises. So this has a seven eighth square head on the uh, on the lead screw here. So we're just going to bring that all the way in. Lead screw looks to be in good condition. I don't see any major problems there. All right, and now let's get these guys out, take the other jaw off. So as I'm unscrewing this, it's some kind of a, looks like I've released maybe some of the evapo rust. Yeah, that's what that smells like. So there must be a cavity in there. Something where the evapor rust was had soaked in. All right, here's the other jaw. Not much to see there. All right, so now to get the, let's see, what's what do we want to do next? So I've got a feeling there's a couple of things happening. There's a, a bar here with three bolts into it, or cap screws on each side. And as I mentioned earlier, we have the this collar, which looks like we need to just punch that roll pin through. So to access these, I think what we'll do is it looks like there's some access holes underneath here. So let's take a look at that. So yeah, so I can get through to the bottom. And this is a 3 sixteenths. Okay, so it looks like you've got to get that cap, you've got to get that screw kind of lined up just right because it wants to come through this access hole.
right, there we go. Again, it smells great. I know you can't smell that, but I can. <laughs> All right, so here are the guides that slide on the bottom. All right, so there's the, holds one of the jaws. Okay, so we've got plenty of movement here. I think all that's left is to get this out. So I have this uh, pretty inexpensive punch, which was bent, and now it's broken because I tried to straighten it out. But it might still work. So let's give it a try. Watch the fingers. Yep, get that roll pin coming out of the back. What is this thing, magnetized? What's going on here? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. There's the roll pin. And so now, this collar should come off. using this Allen head. There we go. So there's our collar and there's a washer. It has a beveled edge. Beveled edge goes towards the inside. And at the very bottom underneath here, can see there's a little mark on I think that's right in the casting where that little knockout will line up with all right let's pull this in oh, there we go we could do that too slide through and there we have it oh you thought you had it Jamie so is it just bound up on the sides it feels like it's just bound up on the sides let's get this in a little bit more Looks to be in good shape. It's dirty. But I don't see any significant damage happening here. Let's take this lead screw all the way out.
I don't feel any, I don't see, oh, I got a note. I don't feel any neck spurs. feels pretty good. Nut looks to be in pretty good shape. It's got one hole here. I'm curious if that's a, a drill mark or if there's something else going on here. Let's pull that grit out. Yeah, that looks just to be a drill mark. Somebody got a little bit aggressive with the drill or with the, the mill. Went down a little bit too deep. And then there's another hole here that goes all the way through. I'm curious what that's for. This, there's nothing in here that looks like it's coming out. Oh, that looks a little gungy in there. Looks like that might be the, an oil channel. Yeah, that is a mess in there. And that, it does line up though, right where that oiler would be. So I'll have to take a closer look at that. See if there's anything that we need to do in there or a better way to clean that out. So taking a closer look here at the bore, I flipped it upside down. I can see the oil hole right here. So that's clear, but this, this whole area here is just scored and gouged. There's some grit in there, but it just looks like it's, uh, just looks like it's in bad shape. You know, this leading part of the board does seem to be where you could get the most, uh, grit kind of getting past that metal washer. Fortunately for me, the back side of the bore is smooth. If you check out, uh, Mr. Pete did a rebuild on one of these, and his was had a gouge all the way through the bore. So I'm lucky that mine doesn't look like that. And a closer look at the shaft. You can see I had, you know, you've got some similar, you know, wear here. Uh, but the main part of the bore looks pretty good. So, all in all, it's okay. It's very serviceable. So looking at this hole, this large hole, <laughs> that is a mistake. <laughs> As I look at the, the other end of it, you can see that was a large drill bit. And man, he almost got all the way through, but not quite. Whoa, like, I haven't done this that long, but I do wonder, are you sleeping? <laughs> You're somebody sleeping at the wheel when that happens? I mean. That's a full inch and a quarter down into the machine. So I guess it's a good lesson for me to pick up ahead of time. You know, those mistakes can happen. that what did we just find 
Aha, that's another washer. That's always cool. So that looks like he's on the back side. All right. There you go. That washer's on the back side, and since it came flying out, I'm not sure which side the beveled edge goes on. But it probably goes similar to the other, with a bevel edge towards the inside. I'm gonna let's see if we compare these two together. Thickness looks to be about the same. They look to be about the same. Okay. That was a nice find. Yeah, it's funny, in my Kurt vise, that interior washer was also a little sneaky and hard to get out. So I've still got a lot of gunk inside that lead screw nut. We're just going to blow that out with some parts cleaner. And I've got an oil hole here on the side. I'm curious as to where that goes. Where does that come out? seeing it. I'll pump some oil through there and see where it comes out. It's not clear to me if that gets to the lead screw or not. There does seem to be something here on the bottom of the lead screw that I can hook this hook into. You know, if that was on the top, I might be more inclined to think that this oil hole on the side actually was drilled all the way here. And then you've got this hole, which, you know, who knows what that is. Let's see if we can clean that out. This one just kind of, oh, it does go in a bit further. Oh, yeah. Again, I'm not sure if that's just somebody missed. Okay, that feels like it stops. So we'll try to get to the bottom of that. We've got unknown hole here, which I suspect is a mist drill. And we have an oil hole here. Don't know where that comes out. And the lead screw at the very bottom has a, a hole in it. So, a couple of mysteries, we'll see if I can figure it out. All right, with the, the bed here cleaned up, as in no more grease on it, I'm trying to think about what I want to do. So, how do I want to bring this thing back to life? It doesn't seem to be particularly worn. And quite honestly, now that I'm thinking this through, there's not much I can do about this bed. My surface grinder 
will not be able to do anything on this because of you can't slide it that way. Um, if I mounted it in the surface grinder this way with the with the wheel on the surface grinder, you know, my depth is only about eight inches. So that won't work. And obviously this won't work. So surface grinder out of the question. So I can hand uh, clean this with some emery, uh, sorry, some Scotch-Brite pads and some WD-40. So I'll probably definitely do that. Let's take a quick look and hit it with some flat stones and see if there are any high spots that jump out. Yep, you can, do you see that? You can, it kind of catches right there and then these stones just pull that high spot right off. If you can see a little bit of that, that shiny part, those are the high spots that are on here. And those. So it does seem to be in pretty good shape. I can feel, and this was, you know, remember I was having a hard time getting that jaw off. You can feel that it's a little bit laid over on the side here. Let's see if we can. Hold this as parallel as possible. Yeah, that top edge. better. Let's try this side. Okay, so I'll clean up the bed with some scotch right pads and some WD-40. And then try to decide where we're going to paint and where we're not going to paint. All right, let's see. I am as curious as you are as to how this is going to come out. All right, so I'm looking to challenge myself here with something new, right? Why am I doing this if not to do something new? I have, you know, taking a look at this logo, the bridge portion of it, pretty clear. It's nice and deep. But over here on this side, the O and the R are kind of falling together and it's just not quite, doesn't quite have the same pop to it that this left side does. And so this is the Bridgeport logo on my Bridgeport. And, you know, quite honestly, that <laughs> I don't think they did a great job with this branding anyway, because um, you could say that that's a Bridgeport and that doesn't make any sense because the P is hard to see. But it's the style that it is, and um, what I'd like to do is try to accentuate that O, clean up that R a little bit, and then see if I can just make it uh, pop a little bit more. So if I take my Sharpie and just see if I can give myself a bit of, bit of a guide. So if I could kind of take that O out of it, middle of that O, and then clean up right here in the middle. I think that would go a long way. So let's start with that. I've got a carbide tip. This is the smallest tip I could get, or that I have. So we've got that guy in the Dremel, and I don't know, let's see what we can do.
This guy's got a fair bit of run out, which is causing it to pop, hop around on me. Just try to reset it. All right, that should work. So taking a look at this oiler, you know, I put some, I put my oil can on there and some went in, but nothing came out. Judging by the angle, I've got a feeling that this goes straight down into the lead screw and the hole that's in that lead screw now, and again, I don't know why that's there, but I'm thinking if I can get this cap, this oiler cap off, then I can re-drill a hole all the way down to the lead screw. Um, I mean, otherwise, why would this oiler even be here? So I'm not sure how to take this out without ruining it. So I'm just going to try and pry it out here. Yeah, so that could be a problem. I don't know if I'll be able to get this out without ruining it. So let me see if I can get another one, order another one, and well, I guess either way, it's useless. Um, the way it is right now, it doesn't take any oil in it. So let's see. Let's get something a little stronger. So this is coming out one way or the other. It's just not going to be usable, and that's okay. Ah, all right, there's the ball, and here's the spring. Let's try. Let's try one of these easy out type tools and see if that can get any kind of a bite on it. Yep, look at that. <laughs> these things never work. Okay, so there's the oiler out. Okay, yep, so that goes down diagonally right at the lead screw, but can't get through because that lead screw has been rotated at some point, I mean, although it's flush right here, something's preventing any oil from getting down through there. So let's drill it out. All right, so I've got an 11 64ths drill bit, which fits in there nicely. And there we go, it goes 
goes through into the lead screw. Now you can see we've got a nice pathway all the way in to the lead screw. I'm just going to hit the I'm just going to hit the jaws here a little bit and get a sense for yeah there's a lot there's kind of a lot going on here actually this portion is not what I'm going to stone this does not go up against anything this side is what goes up against the the jaw So I will stone that side so that we can get So we've got a fair bit of high spots kind of popping up here and there. These flat stones really are helpful, and I recommend that even for the hobby machinist, you get something like this. Um, I made these on my Bridgeport with a diamond cup uh, wheel. Uh, there's a video on that on how to do that, and they've worked out great for for my needs. So something that you might be interested in checking out. See if you can pick up those high spots that it cleaned up. I'm going to move the vise over to the surface plate here in just a minute. I want to check the parallelism between uh, the base of the vise and the bed. So we'll kind of get a sense, see where we're, what we're looking at. You know, we know that these Bridgeport vices have uh, some limitations in them, especially compared to the Kurt vise, um, particularly when it comes to lift. If you have a piece of work that your vise, uh, that you're putting in the vise in the Bridgeport vise, you tend to lift, you have to be really careful to make sure you pat that down. Um, and in as compared to the Kurt Vice, where there's, you know, it has that angle lock, which really drives the part down. So you don't get that, that same lift. So that being said, this is not a super accurate vice, but I'm curious. I want to see what these measurements are. I've already stoned uh, the bed. So first I'm just gonna check for any, I don't feel any, any wobble. Hmm. 
feels pretty good. And so next, let's bring down the indicator. So I'm fresh off the surface grinder and I know that my wheel needs balancing and you can tell that, you know, by the surface finish here, you can see the, in the light, you can kind of see that a little bit of rippling. Now it's almost imperceptible, but it's just that slight little balance. So. I know, I know, I've got a project, I've got to balance that wheel, um, just don't quite have that ready yet. So what I am going to do to kind of make this look a little bit nicer is I'm just going to hit it with some Scotch-Brite. And it just sort of smooths things out, takes off if there's any little burn marks from the wheel. And overall, just makes it look, you know, a little bit nicer. So I'll do that to the rest of these parts. So getting ready for my oiler delivery coming hopefully later on today. I know the one that I purchased is a little bit larger than the hole that I have here, so I'm going to need to drill that out, but it's at an angle. So I've got this handy angle gauge and looking at the eight degree angle, looks like that fits just perfectly. And so I can use that to line it up in the mill so we get that drill going in at the right angle. Got my eight degree angle. Bring that right here in the middle. There 
going to let the let the jaws square it up. All right, there we go. That looks pretty much straight up and down. All right, thanks to Amazon for the late night delivery of this oiler. Hopefully we can wrap this project up. And I know that this is a little bit larger than the one that was in there, the hole that's there. So a quick measurement here on just how wide this is. All right, so this is two, 25, 35, 36, 37, 38, 2, 3, 8. Okay. Let's go get a reamer that would work for that. So I do not have a reamer that's close to that size. And I found a B sized drill. which is 25, 30, 5, 36, 37. So that could be perfect, as long as it's not too big. And then I have a 15 64ths, which is, I think, going to be too small. That's 25, 34. So that's about five thousandths too small. I just don't think this will compress that much. Um, I'm going to start with a smaller one just to get a lay of the land. All right, so now the question is, will that press in? So what I'm thinking of doing is just using the back side of the drill to press it in. I'm just going to snug those up a little bit and we'll tighten them when the bed's down. Again, this Gibbs lubricant is really good for um, rust prevention. It's like WD-40 times 10. It's just a really helpful. It's expensive, but it pays off in the long run. I've used it for a long time. All right.
bevel towards the inside. So that's in. Now we need to put the rails on. And to do that, we need to get at it from underneath. So we're going to make these tight. They're pretty tight getting them off. So we'll crank these up a little bit to match that level of torque. All right, that's going to wrap up the video for today. Thank you for watching. Um, this was a really exciting uh, conclusion to the to the project. Really happy with how the Bridgeport logo came out, and you know how the uh, surface grinder uh, ended up cleaning up all of these parts and pieces. It's a uh, it's a very good vice, very serviceable, and um, this will be. If I look over at my Bridgeport, I have two other vices there now. This will be on the move. I'm going to sell this one um, and try to make room for my next project. So until then, please consider subscribing so you can be tuned in from when that next video shows up. And as always, uh, comments are greatly appreciated. If there's something different um, or a better way of doing something that I have done here on this project, please let me know. I do appreciate that. Um, and as always, um, good luck in your home projects. And until next time, we'll see you later.
From the sun, from the lake, from the hills, from the skies, all is well, lay rest, God is nigh. Let the games begin. Is it bubbling? It's not in yet. Oh, I can hear it. Thank you for the turkeys, Mr. Bunny. Yeah, I think we're over that. I've got it all the way in. Yeah, I think we're good. Thank <laughs> you.